So this may look familiar, but I'm not actually making a cutting board. Rather, I'm making, I uh, thought I'd play around with some trivets, but let me first back up and take you to the beginning of the story. So I got the urge to make some trivets. And like you always do, you did some searching online, looking for other ideas. And I came across a few where people had made them out of uh, multiple species of wood. And I love mixing up different species of wood. And I'm like, hey, yeah, let, let me do some of that. And instead of just, you know, making a cutting a trivet out of just one piece of wood, let's, let's make it out of a bunch of pieces of wood, sort of like I like to do with cutting boards. And that's the first part of the story as to why I'm doing it like this. I made these two trivets 10 or more years ago, and this one is cherry, this one's maple, and they're some of the simplest things to do because you just take a board and you run it over the dado blade on the table saw, you run it several times this way, flip it over, turn it 90 degrees, run it that way. Here, same idea, just wider cuts with the larger pieces of wood left. You get this pleasing waffle design, it looks great, it does a good job, but uh, this one, as you can see here, it's kind of fragile. And some of that is simply because I, I made these strips fairly thin. Uh, some of that has to do with the fact that this was one piece of wood, which, so here the, the wood is going, the cut is going with the grain, but then here the cut is going across the grain. Uh, I had another one that snapped worse. Um, so looks nice, but maybe it doesn't last so long. This one, I left the pieces thicker. And so it didn't really have the snapping problem on this one, but have a look here and you see how it's rocking. And uh, that's, uh, well, you know, it's a trivet. So you'll put a pot on it, the pot might be wet, so the wood's gonna maybe absorb it, some water, and, and, and cause that to move, or just the fact that I've cut away so much of the wood here, which is reducing a lot of the strength and then the wood can move because you know number one rule about woodworking is that wood moves. Now on the one hand it doesn't really matter that these are uh, needing replacement because I'm a woodworker. I can make more. There's always going to be scrap wood to be found in my shop so I can make more trivets. But on the other hand you know you don't want to make something that's intentionally going to break or warp and gluing lots of strips together like this should take care of the tendency of this to warp if I start cutting at it. So I had the idea, I wanted to make some trivets, and I wanted to make them like this. And then I started to think of what kind of design do I want to do? How am I going to cut grooves? Am I going to cut slots in it? Am I going to use a router table and cut holes in it? Here's another trivet. My dad made these for me ooh, 30 years ago. My dad made this. This is, a, uh, this is just a, a little ceramic tile. It was a, a leftover from my parents' house when they redid it. And so yeah, here's a trivet. It is just a solid framed tile and we used to have three or four of them uh, ceramic is kind of um it's it's fragile they've cracked over over time or you know something drops on them so they, they but anyways they worked well for many years so like you don't have to have holes or other stuff in it which more or less brought me back around again to i'm just doing something decorative something uh something creative I, it doesn't uh, you don't need to have holes i don't i don't think i mean i haven't done any scientific studies on it but it's kind of fun sometimes i think just to sort of get into the thinking behind a project so turning that around i like putting strips together for cutting boards and so i always save my strips Right above the door to my shop, I have all this short piece storage where I, I put lots of bits. So I, I use that. In fact, I've got like a couple of uh, cutting board blanks that I made up the other day. So I sort of have some emergency presents available if I need to. These could be quickly trimmed and finished. But I still, I, mean, I, I have some pieces that uh, they might be on the small side for a cutting board. But a trivet doesn't really need to be that big, you know? Seven by seven, six by six, five by five. You can do something fairly small by a half inch thick. So anyways, that to said, you can use even smaller bits of wood. So let me talk more about overall design. This is actually a prototype that I made, which actually might end up being one of my good finished pieces. It's just a piece of scrap cherry that I happen to have on hand. I cut it to six by six half inch thick and I drilled some holes in it. Well, how did I come up with this design? 
Actually, just let me summarize and cut to the chase. I tried several designs, and what I settled on was a, a series of circles, circles within circles. So a circle in the middle, then a ring of circles, and another ring of circles, and I played around with a whole bunch of different sizes and dimensions before settling on this. And then I printed it out life-size so I could just attach it to my block and drill it out. And so now I'm back at the beginning where I had one piece glued up, and now I'm gluing up some more. Um, I'm looking for a 6x6 six six piece, so you might think I'd get two out of it, but actually I'll get to that later. This might only be one trivet, so I wanted to make some more. And here is where, again, you can have fun with color. I've got Paduk, Maple, Cherry, and then this is some Osage Orange, followed by another bit of Maple, and some White Oak trimming it out. And the whole thing is right now about six and three quarters, so I should have no trouble getting a six by six out of that. And this is, well, it looks like about 16 inches long. So, again, I should get two pieces out of that, but... Well, actually, I'll let you in on the secret. I'm planning to rip these down on the planer quite thin, cut them in half, and then glue them like that. We'll see how that goes. Okay, glue. I just want all of these to line up along the bottom. I don't, did not really worry too much about thickness. And that just makes this that much a quicker thing to whip out. And a little while later, and we can take it out of clamps and on to the fun part. Okay, turned out beautiful. Look at those strips. I've never worked with Osage Orange before. I have no idea if it's going to keep that color. Nope. Very thin, between a quarter and three eighths. While I was at it, I found this piece of uh, scrap walnut in the uh, back and I planed that one down because my prototype pieces, I thought, you know, they kind of turned out nice. So I think I'm gonna try one that's just a chunk of wood. Maybe it'll curl up, maybe it won't. Now these pieces, they're very thin. My idea is I'm gonna cut them then I'm going to take a piece, turn it 90 degrees, and glue it on, and uh, see what that looks like. Got the two pieces, and I want to glue them like that. And of course, the glue is going to get to make it skate all over the place. So it's actually almost six and three eighths wide, and my goal is six inches by six inches. So I have a bit of room right along the edge, where I can shoot in a few pin nails to hold it while I'm gluing it. So there we have a ridiculous amount of clamping for a little piece. I'm gonna do the other one off screen. And a day later, and look at that. Oh, that turned out lovely. Okay, there we go. These turned out beautiful. I'm halfway tempted to just leave them like that. They look really nice. Now, I made two so that I could do two different things. My original thought, like this, this was my prototype piece, which actually I'm keeping because it turned out really nice. My original thought was to put holes all the way through one of them. Definitely the walnut. The walnut piece is gonna get holes just like the cherry. But I had, I mean, part of the reason I did the crisscrossing effect aside from looks and was to strengthen it to sort of make, stop it from warpage but I also had wondered about doing a waffle type design on here 
But now I'm just wondering how that's really going to change the look if I put these huge cuts in it. So I'm pretty sure I'm not going to do huge cuts. I thought... Let me skip to the end. This one, I'm going to drill holes, see what it looks like. Afterwards, I'm going to see what it looks like. Because this one, I have got three three broad stripes down the middle and I thought about doing a maybe a quarter inch cut one two three and then on this side they'd be going this way so again one two three that would radically change the look because instead of you know instead of wide skinny wide squint skinny that would in effect turn this red stripe into two red stripes that were and it would all be much more in 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 line with it haven't decided yet Kind of wish I had more pieces to play with. Here I have, this is a pattern that I generated from SketchUp, which I can now cut out and glue down and get to some drilling. Now one thing is I should have put maybe the walnut piece on the bottom because, let's see, you do get a little blowout around the holes, but these are all going to get rounded over with the router bit, so hopefully that will all disappear. I like it. It looks cool. I'm going to ask my wife what to do with this one. And yeah, we're going ahead with the slicing. And after a little bit of lacquer, here we go. These turned out okay, but these are just stunning. I really am loving the color. Uh, I think the holes look kind of cool on this one. Here, I'm really glad that I went ahead and did the slots. It, it did really radically change the look, but I think it looks beautiful. And yeah, I think it, it's interesting having the two sides that are flipped at 90 degrees. I think that really works well with these slots. And even these, I mean, these are quick and simple and really uh, we'll have to see if these being just solid pieces of wood, if they are stable or if they're going to move on me like he, uh, like this old waffle one did. So. These were quick and easy and fun. These were, as you saw, quite a lot of work, but still turned out beautiful. Save your scraps, people. And that's it. A quick, fun project with some beautiful results. And as always, I'd like to thank you for stopping by and spending some time in my shop. I hope you found something interesting and enjoyable, and we'll see you on the next one. Oh yeah, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year.